right, so okay. it's 10 o'clock, we'll get started. No, um, so we have somebody from Norfolk Professional Services going to be going joining us this yeah. morning. Should it's be either Tori or Greg. Yeah. All right, well, if they're late, we're going to get started That's without right. them. That's 10 o'clock. They cool. should have been here already. Let's go. Um, we're here for the Suwannee County EOC design presentations. We know you've already submitted uh, information. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we already got that. We're going to have uh, a second review. Um, it will be recorded. Uh, the people from the county, I'll introduce them. This is Eddie Hand, he's the fire chief from Fire Rescue. Nice this gentleman here, uh, Eric Musgrove, he's from the clerk of court's office. Right. This is Logan Woods, she's from the clerk of courts. Okay. Paula Pennington is from County Administration. Okay. Willie Willis works at Public Works, and my name is Shannon. I work at County Administration. So uh, we're gonna we're gonna try to time box this from 10 to 10:20, 10 okay. and then when we get done, um, you know we'll bring the each group in successively after that. Um, we basically just want to have a conversation with you guys, Absolutely. give you guys the ability to present information that you'd like to present. We've got some uh, brief questions we want to ask, and we'll just go to it from there. Absolutely. Um, Everybody should know where the restrooms are out there. Break room. Is there anything else we need to go over? Anything for you guys? As no. soon as North Florida gets here, um, the spill note is just bring them in, or should we tell them? Because I know I, I know you guys are going to want them here. I hope. A lot of Tory's office this week, so it'll probably right. be great. Greg, Greg said, yeah, that's what he said. And when he gets here, y'all familiar with him? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's fine. Just come on. Yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah. And so, and one of the things that we thought that I think Mr. Harris sent us was that we were 10 minute presentation, maybe 10 minutes, I guess. Questions, is that right? Okay, perfect. Yeah. Perfect. yeah. Actually, you know, if you want to take, if you want to split it up 10 and 10, if you want to make it 5 and 15, however you want to do okay. it, sure. we're comfortable with that. Sounds great. Okay, well, let's get with it. Ready? <laughs> Give you a little something, uh, kind of walk us through. We'll eat after his on. Me too. <laughs> we took them by into the clerk's office and they keep all the official records. Thank you. Anybody else needs another one? Just one of these. So I want to first say thank you. Thank you for allowing us to come talk with you all this morning about your project. Um, it's one of those projects that we find is in our wheelhouse that we do a lot of um, in a lot of different places. Um, so we're very, very comfortable with this scope and this type of project. Um, I want to start by introducing who you see here with us, with me today. My name is Will Rutherford with Clemens Rutherford and Associates. Uh, our main office is in Tallahassee and uh, I live in Madison County. I just commute, I have for 28 years and I like it, honestly. Um, to my right, Sam McMillan, who is from my vote. Sam actually is interning and working with H2 at a Tallahassee office currently. Um, maybe future electrical engineers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's a good opportunity. To see. So far, so good. Yeah. Good, good, good opportunity. And some of y'all may know Sam. Um, uh, I've gotten to know Sam quite a bit in the last year. Sam actually dates my daughter. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gauging him. <laughs> There's a lot, of lot of them on a lot of levels. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, kind of a crazy story. Uh, both of my children are valedic. One of my ch child is a valedictorian, the other one's not. And all of their boyfriends and girlfriends are valedictorians, except my son. Passed. We had a lot of fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. Uh, and then Ryan Tuning, who used to be in Tallahassee, but now he runs, he's a principal, H2, runs the Gainesville office. So he came in from Gainesville this morning. We have done since 1960. Alachua, really. Alachua. <laughs> or Alachua. There's yeah. a yeah. big difference. So, uh -huh. you know, one of the major. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and so then one of the one of the things that becomes important for this team, we, I'm going to start in the top left corner where our, our drink would be. Um, see the folks there and we are very big on local interest and vested interests with employees and I've shown you people that's with our firm Terry Ransom who is from Brantford um, she's been with us for 25 years um, architect she, she works in our firm she does some of the she works with some of the uh, essential facilities but primarily her role and where she's been for the last 10 years is in the medical in, in the medical side and she migrates over with me at times and of course Ryan you see there and Sam and then Greg and Tori both 
Um, and, and we felt like that that was a great team for us with Civil because of the, the amount of work they do in Swanee County. And they're doing the site now where the proposed facility is, so it made sense. And there's some economies of scale for price and value for them doing that. We're hoping because that's a you know with essential facilities like this, it it's, it gets to be sometimes costly when you do M plus one and you having to comply with those codes. And we're going to talk about that a little bit here briefly. One of the things that this team that we are very proud of is I have I've been at CRA for 27 on well, 28 years. Um, when Ralph 25 or 20, 26, 22, 22, and but we have successfully worked CRA and H2 since 1960. Our firms have worked together. My father, who was still the president and principal, was 82 years old, he's 50 plus hours a week, won't quit. Said he can't go home. My mom would drive him crazy. So, <laughs> uh, well, so we don't have we don't have a learning curve. We're not going to learn on your dollar. We're not going to learn on your time. We've done this before as a team. We've worked with North Florida. We're working with them now um, on similar facilities in Columbia, uh, at currently with, with Greg. And so they're no stranger to our team either. So the consistency's there and our life and our, and our our own, I guess, life leadership skills to those people. We haven't bought people with our firm to bring them over by their experience. Everything we show you today, we have done, the people sitting in front of you has done. So that's important to us because it transfers to you. Um, top right just gives you a few pieces and parts of the kind of the, some numbers of hardened facilities, EOC facilities, uh, years and years experience that we put together, this team in our office and our local team team leaders and locality of putting Swanee County first. And that's important to you, um, it's important to us, okay? One of the things with the EOC at the bottom, success. You talk about driving success for a type of facility on EOC. Um, listen, uh, because I've done this in a lot of different places, doesn't mean it meets your needs, doesn't mean it's what you want. I wanna to listen to what you want and, and work with you to tell you, this is what we've seen, this is trends, these are things that happen. But we give you that experience that we've taken from other places and give that to you. That's what our benefit and can we want to do for you guys is. Being clear and communicating uh, as a team, that's huge. We're not sitting here as a separate individual. It's not all about what you signed me up for as a fee basis. It's about how I come back and, and, and tell people, ask Cost Wine, Cost Wine County EOC director. Ask him, did we do what we said we were going to do? Ask him, is it right? That's important to me. That's longevity. That's what I. That's what I'm here to build. It's not about a simple fee basis today and walk away. It's a relationship. That's where we want to be with our team. That's where we put our clients first, and the interests first. And it's in the same thing. Doing things right the first time. That doesn't cost you money. Um, we're, we're not learning. I'm gonna say it again. We have the. There's no one you'll talk to today on these teams that's got as much experience that we have in these type of facilities. I'm not bragging. I'm just being honest. I think we worked on two. Grant based EOCs, same process you guys are going through this, this year. Right now. Right now. And, and that's big. And so, those factors that make that successful, you know, those pieces and parts, being familiar with the codes, being familiar with what we're starting in, not having to start over. Um, one of the biggest things for, for, me, for being familiar is I'm doing the state's EOC new facility right now. Okay? It's $200 million. It is uh, sort of a Kevin Guthrie, which y'all will deal with, but primarily it's Christina Gomez, uh, Goatsman. Christina took over from Dan Kilcollum, she retired. Um, through all the grants you have, every county, I, not every county, five counties got those grants on $200,000 planning grants, same as you got. I'm doing all five of those right now, the same way. Done with them, just finished union. That's one of the ones I'm talking about. Um, so we're, we're not strangers to what you're doing. Uh, we know what those deliverables are. I'm gonna walk you through that in just a second. And real quick, before we flip the page on the bottom right is a hardened section. It's a big deal. Knowing how to put together hardened facilities is different than regular, regular wind loads. So currently, per FBC, risk category four, a typical building in Swanee County is 130 mile an hour wind speed. That's what you would design. If I was putting a commercial building like this here now, you're into that 130 mile an hour wind zone. Um, going to a risk four under an EOC and, during, and, and your contracts that you signed with FDEM, um, you're at 160. Um, right, right, that's what you're going to be, okay? And that's ICC 500 code. You're not, they're not forcing you or asking you to go to tornado. If you notice, Union, I have gone to tornado. Tornado's at 200 mile an hour, okay? I have gone to tornado in Union and a lot of other places. Uh, there's not a whole lot of difference between 160 and 200 in price when you get to that point, depending on material selected that you build with. 
something that we could help you with and talk to you about. It has to do with openings and, 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 and the amount of connections on the corners. Um, that may be something you want to do, so you're trying to, it's not just hurricane enhanced. Because right now, what you've signed up for is a 160 mile an hour hurricane enhanced building. So there's some things you might want to talk about with that. Um, so let's flip over. So one of the things that, that I wanted you to know is some of the key design issues, operationally and staff efficiencies. In a typical, in a county EOC, and you've asked for that central space, the restrooms, the sleeping areas. So the things that you had in your RFP, you see photographs here on the left side of. Those are all those spaces you asked for. There are some critical design components that you want to talk about with the floor. Do you access it with access floors so it's flexible long term, so all your infrastructure is under the floor, under an access floor, so it can be moved? Or do you locate centrally with the end of the floor with a trough and tables are arranged in a U? I noticed one of the things you had asked for that potentially may have been a backup dispatch center in this, in this facility. So with a backup dispatch center, we want to be careful how we get infrastructure and cables and, and, and all, the, all the power into it because you can't pick it up and move it. Those consoles are fifteen to $18,000 a piece, okay? There's two, there's two console providers in the Zabex, uh, Evans, are the two premier consoles in the country. No one else. Steel case, they'll all make, present a product, but it's like this, it won't last. Um, those chairs, just like in a dispatch in a jail, our, our firm, we do a ton of corrections work and public safety work all, all over the U.S. and out of the U.S. And that's the biggest thing that people do. They buy a $100 chair, $200 chair, person goes home, you look at ergonomics, um, because they get back injuries. You sit in that chair for that long and that, it's a problem. Um, so you, you, have to, you have to kind of put that a little bit aside. That chair that's three or 400 pound rated is $800, um, but it lasts three times as long as that $200 chair, and you reduce that worker's comp rates on those things. So those things you gotta consider. Um, but it's your choice. We'll present you and show you all those options through that. We do full service. Everything from design through F F &E, and all the way through MEP design, the, the whole gamut. We do everything. Um, the only thing that we have a consultant start on this reform out is we have MEPs with H2, which is like our. our, our, our almost in house. Yeah, well, almost in house. <laughs> and civil. Um, but everything we do there, we really package that to you. But some of the key issues that you can, you can read through and look at acoustics become big. In a county EOC, when you have a multitask, and this is it's no different anywhere else. You, if you have one activation, okay, and you have one event going on in your main comm room, having those breakout rooms or enclosed secondary dispatch area, which you asked for, is a good idea because now you can handle two situations at once. Um, if you have the train that derails off of 90 off the spur, you're going to deal with that probably in a, in a local sense of a place of an EOC reaction. At the same time, if you had a, a tornado event on the south end of the county, all, both of those pieces and parts are in that same room. To hear over the comms and what's being spoken becomes difficult. So having that secondary space in there is, is huge. Um, those things that we'll walk you through and lead you through. I'm doing this right now with Sheriff Cousins in Levy County. That's one of their problems is they're, they're growing and, it's, and there's too many people in there at one time and they can't hear, uh, can't communicate. So that's just things to consider. Um, the One of the biggest things I think that, that folks sometimes fail to realize is, is that the, this facility has to grow with you with your county growth. So have it where it's expandable. It's, you, you don't know, nor do I, what trends will happen, what the state will push forward to you, what FDEM will say, you now have to pick this up. Um, and, and you need to be, be guarding this. So having it where it's expandable and being able to move with that trend is huge. So having those walls where they can be expanded, you don't want to build a core again. Power, fire protection, all those pieces and parts size adequately to encounter for that growth that could happen, as well as the power uh, infrastructure. And that's things that we'll walk through with you guys on and make sure. I want to talk to you a little bit real quick and then we'll go into some questions and whatever you guys want to ask us, schedule. So this is deliverables. That, that, that deliverable schedule is yours. <coughs> on the left side, you see all the deliverables and pieces. Those were given to you, not these, I put these in here. But these were excerpts that they gave to you from FDEM per your contract, okay? You got the same contract that everybody else did, except yours had 90% construction documents where a lot of them had 70% construction documents, okay? It's not a lot of difference between 70% CDs and 90% CDs. They didn't ask you for a deliverable set between schematics, design development, or construction documents in design phases. So if you look at the scheduled dates that I arrived at, that's 
I can change or modify that however you like, okay? One of the things that you need to consider currently with the site is you're designing a site now for a, a, another piece of a building. This building will have to be an N plus one. When you go into a dispatch or a call center, NFPA 1221 comes into play. You can't escape it. 1221 says that you will have redundancy in power and water and sewer and calm. So there's three calm lines that will come in. One will come out of Tennessee, I can promise you that, because that's the only one that's not rerouted back through uh, Birmingham and Dothan. So in those three different lines that come in, all that stuff has to be redundant, has to be planned to put in. Um, with the site design with, with Greg and, and, uh, and Tori's working on now, let's get some economies of scale so that we get that water and that sewer and those redundancies with that. It, it, it's, that's huge, um, having water and sewer with rated pressures at that site, okay? I don't know what they are. I, don't see, I haven't seen flow tests, but that's one of the deliverables that FDEM wants to know because of that very reason. They'll ask for that, and, and it's important. Because um, we don't have flow, we're talking about ground contact chambers, storage container. That's not what we want to get into. I don't think it's a problem, but I think that's the kind of stuff that we want to touch up front on that deliverable with that survey. Um, and some of that can be shared, so we share that cost and reduce that cost. Um, the FEMA and DOD, one of the things with USC DOD criteria 410, one of the things you want to protect against is threats those, and the threat analysis that we'll do. So I'll give you an example. A semi can carry 19,400 pounds of TNT, okay? That has a, a DOD standoff of 82 feet for, 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 the, for that threat to not be fatal. So either you, you're either going to do, that threat analysis is going to say, um, and when it's completed, we're not, that's not a high level threat for us with that TNT. And, and on, this, on this particular building, you would not be at that highest level threat, okay? But then a five pound backpack with TNT, um, has a 24 foot distance for fatal radius, okay? So when we would design that site, it becomes huge. So cars, along with septet, you can't get up to speed and run the car into it, into the building. World's gotten crazy. Yeah. Nuts out there that do that kind of stuff. But it's kind of stuff we would integrate through the design, taking into account for the DOD, septet, all those requirements. And so it doesn't cost you money in, 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 in guessing at it. But if you don't do that, you want to be accredited, and you want uh, FEMA funding for the future of, of, of those tasks, and you're not accredited, you don't get that money. So, and, 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 and to blast proof a building is, is, is extremely expensive. Don't get into that. Let's use those natural features in environmental design, septic, crime you know, prevention through the environmental design. Let's use those features and not, and not pay for it. Um, there's no reason to pay $3,000 for that window when I can take 24 feet and push it back. It, it just doesn't make sense. So we've done that in a lot of different places, and that's the kind of thing that I would say we would do for you guys. We're familiar with your site. I'm going to close with this. We would really love to, to take this project on with you guys and work with you. Um, it would, it's, it's the kind of work that we do. You would be a priority in our production schedules. I'm not going to tell you that I'm not busy. I am. Anybody that tells you they don't, they're not busy right now, either one is no good or they're lying to you. Okay? So I am busy, but I am busy because I'm good at this. It's plain and simple. Um, we do a lot of this. It's not a learning curve. Call Christine, call FDEM, call Guthrie, call, uh, call them all and ask them. Um, who, would you, who would you pick if you could? Ask them. With that, anything y'all want to talk about? I don't want to talk too much out of turn, so whatever, whatever you guys want to talk about, we'd be glad to entertain. I've got a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, Based on the different companies we've got in there, um, they're all coming to the table with experience and whatever. I just want to give you guys an opportunity to articulate whatever you guys view as your differentiators. What is it that you guys believe that is going to set you apart from the other two companies that are going to be with us today? Sure. So I don't really, I'll be honest, I've, I've, I've played enough sports in my life that I've never really always played against the man in the mirror. Never really thought about the man across the field. Um, just never did. I don't know anything about those two companies. I haven't looked them up, don't know who they are. Don't even know where they're from. But when I see their names, I don't recognize them. So if you ask me what makes me different from what I see on that board, the normal competitor that I would see that does this kind of work is not on that board, okay? 
the only one that I've seen, if you go to FDM and look at the list, the companies that have their names up there in, in, uh, in emergency management in the state is not there. I am. I've done more of these jobs, and if you look at that list and your leave behinds, than any one of those two have done. It's not new for us, so the things that will separate us on this particular project is our knowledge of what you're doing with an essential facility, <coughs> our knowledge that what's going to what's going to be required with FDEM to get approval on these deliverables to sign off, because you don't go on to one, two, or three without processing one delivery. So I think that our experience with this type of facility, and yeah, and I think one of the things I mentioned too is we're not stretching fire station design no. or courthouse design no. or all right. those other things right. into these type of fields because they aren't even close to being the same thing. Not even close. And, 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 you know, and this is, you know, I bring you a team today that we've worked together since 1960 before. Um, we've worked 25 years together. Um, and this team that you see will be the team that finishes this project. He's a principal. I'm a principal. I'm too young to retire. I'm not retired. Let me ask you a question about review. Um, we've noticed that different uh, in different proposals, as they progress through the design phase, mm -hmm. they've got periods where there's review. Um, tell us what what is typical for you, or what you'd like to do. Um, I'll, I'll just simply say, from our perspective, you know, we think of review as what we're doing here today. Sure. Um, not hey, send me these documents. You got a week to look at them. If you don't look at them in a week. Really well, yeah, no, no, no. Right. So tell me sure. how you guys envision a review process. So I would think that we would start, and, and I would follow these deliverables as far as approval. But for me in design, I would start with a kickoff meeting. And I want a kickoff meeting to talk about what you want. And it's, what is this code? What are your hot buttons? What are the things that you really want? What are the stakeholders' points of views that they want to accomplish with this? I would go through and, and do a programming phase where I program every space for a square footage of need. States told you you need 5,750 square feet, okay? That's based on your population. That's not really based on what your need is. Your dollar bill will, will also have something to do with that, the budget. So I'll walk through a programming with every stakeholder, whoever you tell me is involved, and we'll put together a program. And that program will go from every space and every service piece that goes through there. Then, it, then we'll go into what I would call a schematics phase, conceptualize where I would lay a, a floor plan down that it would be like this with a floor plan. And then I would come back with that in, in schematics. And I would go through with that same user group those schematics with an, a potential look of what that building could look like for your interest, for your comments. Then I'd go back and I'd move into des to design deliverables, a, de a design development phase, which then brings in H2 doing line drawings. He's doing a narrative in schematics, okay, up front. Design development, we're going to bring in and start putting pipes and pieces and talk about chill water versus DX unit versus heat, all that. These are charrette design meetings with you guys. Floor plans and then in design development, we also get into elevations of what they look like. What do you want the building to be? What kind of components do you want to be with cost associated so that you get to pick what pieces and parts that you have? From design development, you say move forward, I'm going to see these construction documents. Then it's going to be detailed into that final set. So I would envision us having a minimum of four or five charrette meetings in it going through that. If you need me to come to town hall meeting, so let's make the public know what we're doing, I do that with every one of these. That's part of the gig. I'm okay with that. It's not something I'm going to say, pay me $2,000 to come do it. No. It's, it's got to get approved and I'm going to come do it. So, so, uh, that's what it takes. That's the job. Okay, that's why we're successful with that because we want to be a we want to be a, a bought-in partner with you, and your stakeholders are your voters and your people. Period. We get that. Um, so that's how I, I would envision us doing that. I think I think one of the things that you got to be careful of with this project is what I just described to you is not what DEM cares about. They want a deliverable, and then they go straight to CDs. Okay, all that stuff I just mentioned. That's why if you see these dates, between August and November, probably he's doing that. He's, he needs three months to just do that. No, because I'm going to hit the ground running on day one to get to this date at January. That's what they care about. We're going to do our own thing that we need to do to make you happy and make your constituents and your users happy. DEM wants that that date. Okay? Does, 
There's two different schedules. There's a deliverable schedule for funding capabilities, then there's a design deliverable that makes this project successful in Swanee County. And that, that's, that's why it's like that. I think, I'm way out of bounds here, but I'm just gonna tell you all the truth. They gave you a $200,000 grant, okay? You want 6,000 6, to 10,000 feet is what your ad said, okay? Now, one of these facilities, and hardened facilities, you're gonna build for less than $350 a foot. And that's, and, and that's, and, and I'm, <laughs> I'm really stretching that, okay? Pricing and market and economy right now, it, a hardened facility, you could be as much as $400, $500 a foot. It's, 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 it's bad. Easy. The, the economies are tough right now. And I don't, I'm not gonna come over here and lie to you and, and oh yeah, it's gonna be cheap and you can do all this and it ain't expensive. It's not, it's gonna be tough. This, and that's one of the things that we, we're really big on is budgetary constraints and following your guidance. And I'll give you that information. Now we've done this. I would right now tell you, I would be looking at an ICF building right off the bat because I get insulation and, and, and I get economy and local vendor participation. That's how we're gonna beat that number. If I go out to a hard bid scenario right now and I get a bidder out of Gainesville that's just putting the number to it, you will be $550 a foot. Mm -hmm. And you only have $200,000 for design work. Look at what look at what your consultants work are being paid for now percentage based, okay? There, there's a discussion coming as to whether or not you have enough money to pay me and consultants to do this. I'm just being honest, okay? Um, and, 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 but that was the deal with the state. The governor said, give all these counties $200,000, that's all we're doing. That's their planning money only, okay? And everybody went out and said, oh, we got 200,000, we're gonna design, design what? You know, that's that, you're misleading them. I, I don't get on my soapbox today, but that was, that was not the smartest thing they could have done. They should have been more interested in your need instead of just, hey, here's 200,000. Oh, we gave you something. Yeah, you did, but did you hurt us or did you help us? So, I'm just, I guess I'm being honest. That's, that's exactly what I think you gotta be prepared for. It's, no, it's nothing new for me. Um, we've crossed that bridge in, in all of them so far. Um, this is a bridge you gotta cross. Gotcha. And I hope I didn't step on the toes with that. I'm just trying to tell you the truth. No. I have no issues with candor. <laughs> all right, we are, a little over time. Are there any other questions? Any kind of informational questions that you guys have? All right. I know it's been quick. I really appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the materials. Sure. And um, we appreciate you being here today. Thank you. Thank Very you much. so much. Yep. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. You guys will close that door. Um, so we are here for the Swanee County EOC Design Review. Uh, we know you guys have uh, given us previous proposals and things, and this is going to be a review for that. I want to introduce to you all the uh, personnel from the county that are here. Uh, to my left, this is Willie Willis. He works in Public Works. Uh, this is Paula Pennington. She works at County Administration. Mm -hmm. This is Logan Woods. She's going to be operating the camera. It's a public meeting. She'll make the records of it. She's from the clerk's office along with Eric Musgrove. He's from the clerk's office. This is our fire chief, Eddie Hand, and I'm Shannon Roberts. I'm from County Administration. So we have, we're going to try to box this in about 20 minutes-ish. Okay, so if it goes over a little bit, don't don't worry. Um, that time is yours to manage how you would like to based on how the information you want to present. We do have a couple of questions we'd like to ask, so if we could save some time for that. Um, other than that, um, I see you've got some handouts or whatever you need. Mm -hmm. Why don't I just turn it over to you guys to make introductions and hand things out? and we will get started, sir. Okay, we got the introductions kind of built in into the presentation, so rather than introduce ourselves twice, we'll just go along with that. So this is what we sent you on the 21st, and this is the PowerPoint, which we're gonna give it to. I'm glad we brought hard copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so this is not our normal meeting space. We, we, gotcha. we only got four, so hopefully you guys can share. Uh, I, I got one here. We have one here, so 
I know right here. Here, yeah. hold on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. You can this just the extra. Just take out this one already. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's an extra. My pass up. Don't mind. Car three to us. There you go. I'm sorry. Hopefully you get a full house out of that. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll do this the old fashioned way without any electronics. <laughs> this is not our typical. We didn't bring we didn't so bring boards. That. Oh that that's yeah. fine. That's that's fine. We we do all sorts of different presentations depending on you know who we're presenting to. Uh, so I'll go ahead and start. Uh, if you just follow me along, that would be great. Uh, the, we didn't know exactly what to, to address here, so there are some things we're just going to skim right through quickly. Sure. We're going to give you as much time to ask us questions as you need, and um, you know, let me start. So we're delighted to be here. My name is Ricardo Quinez. I'm president of PQH uh, Group. Um, I've been with PQH uh, for 36 years out of the 40 years. Uh, I'm the Q, and the P and the H are retiring, and these are new principles. <laughs> <laughs> new P and the new A, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Uh, I'm trying to have my letter as fast as I can. <laughs> <laughs> So on this page, you'll see a little bit of a summary of our experience. Uh, what we wanted to kind of point out out of that is we, we don't do EOCs. We don't over 20 fire stations. We don't multiple projects for various municipalities. The majority of them in, in, in Duval County and St. John's County. Uh, aside from the EOCs, we don't other structures, particularly for St. John's County, where they wanted them hardened. To 160 mile an hour, so the admin building's got generator, it's elevated, it's it's got shutters, it's it's designed almost like a an EOC, but it's not the EOC. Uh, that was what they chose to do. Uh, in in one of the pictures here, this is the the old uh, Federal Reserve Bank building in Jacksonville. It was built like a fort, so when the fire department in Jacksonville wanted to do the EOC, they looked at that building, had us do an evaluation, and actually put their entire headquarters, 911, and EOC there. The building is is impenetrable. I mean, and, and on top of that, we went ahead and put shutters, we put a high co uh, concrete roof. It, it works really well, they're very, very happy with it. Um, as I said, we, we do a lot of municipal work, so we know, you know that there's different hierarchies and a lot of uh, stakeholders and players that we need to interview. Uh, the next page is our design team, and rather than introduce this, introduce these fellows, I'm just going to let them go ahead and tell them a little bit about ourselves. Frank, I'm Frank Ringhofer. I'm vice president, uh, one of the partners of PQH. I've been working there for about 20 something years, uh, and I've been involved with. I'm my role is uh, director of design, uh, production primarily, but I'm also involved with multiple other areas within the firm. Um, with that being said, the, the number of the projects that you see that we have experience with the EOCs, the fire stations, I've been involved with almost all of them at different levels. Some design, specifications, construction administration, uh, QA, QC, and all the other items with that, that goes with that. Also, the number of multiple municipality projects I've worked on as well. So most of the most recent ones I'm very much involved with. With St. John's County, I'm working with them with their uh, Sheriff's Department right now, building a new uh, standalone service, uh, supply and service building for them for their vehicle maintenance and uh, uniform maintenance. Also working with them on various uh, small structures for their fire and rescue that they need just ancillary building storage for additional trucks and stuff like that. So we're very much involved with the but that part of it. And then I do also work on a number of projects beyond that, which is we do a lot of work for local universities and colleges uh, throughout the state, uh, Embry-Riddle, uh, Daytona State, uh, Jacksonville University, Flor uh, Flagler College, and Florida State uh, College of, Florida State, uh, Florida State College of Jacksonville. <laughs> Sorry, they keep, they've changed your name a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So that's been my role. I'll let Roger talk a little bit about his background. My name is Roger Chastain. I've been with PQH about 10 years. I, I was consulting with them for years and then they asked me to come on board. Um, we do things a little differently there. Um, a lot of times CAs get their jobs after they've been contracted and everything out and the GC's ready to work. 
I get involved in the early stages of it. I've uh, been a contractor for 40 years. I'm licensed in Florida, Georgia, and North Carolina. And uh, we do things different. I, I look at the plans and begin to get involved even in the 30% set of these drawings um, to look at the feasibility of how it's built, uh, especially materials. How can we make uh, changes to the building? I think you all know the material prices are crazy today. And it's just it's just nuts. And you there's a couple projects in there you can see where the price per square foot is just crazy it's doubled in the last two or three years and so I try to get involved with Frank Frank and I work very very close together his his office is right next to mine and so we I get involved at the beginning of it to look at the feasibility of it what is the best way to build this building and how can we build this building economically for the county and um, so I'm involved in that and then towards the after that gets going I will be involved all the way through it I come up to meetings, I come up to job sites on a monthly basis, I look at the uh, pay applications from the general contractor, I walk the site, take pictures, do a field report, tell you whether they're you're crazy on their draw, <laughs> you know, they're billing 60% and only did 30%. I review all those, I sign off on all the pay applications. All the RFIs, all of the submittals, all of that comes through my office. And uh, I regulate those if there's any issues or questions. I don't try to change the architectural design of the building. That's these guys' decision to do. But I look at the feasibility of it and look at all of those things and run them through my office. And so that's my role from the beginning all the way through. I just don't take it at the, when it's in contract. I, I start at the beginning to look at the whole project I, and how it's built. When I started out, I started out in the design build firm, so I saw the value of having a contractor on board to keep you out of trouble <laughs> and make sure that you're designing something that meets the budget and, and Roger is a great asset. Uh, the next page is the consultants. Uh, JB Pro is going to be providing the civil design. Uh, we are currently working with them on two other projects. Uh, they're out of Gainesville. And then McVeigh and Mangum will be doing the mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and structural. And uh, our relationship with them goes back 25 years and over 400 projects. <laughs> Uh, you know, sometimes you start a sentence and your husband or wife kind of finishes. That's how kind of, that's how we work together. Uh, great relationship over the last few years. One of the questions that you ask, uh, in particular for this, had to do with the project approach and the methodology. How we gonna do things? Uh, and it's hard to cover all of that in, in ten minutes. So I did a really brief summary here. Uh, the important thing is a step by step, and, and you don't want to take a step before taking the, the previous one. You want to make sure that every every decision gets validated after every every phase and before you go on to the next one. Uh, so the first slide kind of shows that there's a process. Then the next slide kind of defines what that process is. Uh, so we'll come with you. we'll meet with you. We'll meet with all your stakeholders. We'll develop a program after we get all their uh, needs and, and information. And then that program then it's, it's developed into two or three conceptual ideas. Then those conceptual ideas are reviewed with you for budget, scheduling, uh, feasibility, practicality. We'll meet with whatever many people you want to make sure that the plan that we have is gonna work for you and is the best. Uh, and then from that it goes into schematic. Uh, so you see the three three headed monster here. So I'll be I'll be involved in very very heavily during those stages. Once the project goes into design development, Frank will be in charge of running the production. But I will continue working throughout the project to make sure that the vision uh, is still is still attained. And then as the project moves into 100% permitting, then Frank and and Roger will be working together. And then once he goes into construction, Roger becomes the main person in charge, but he's always checking back to us, hey, we got this submitted, and it's not what we have on the specifications, can you review it? So that, that assures that you get you know, what, what, you, what you got in the By the way, I will say this. In this day and age, sometimes they gotta change materials just because of the nature of the thing out there. So a, lot of, a lot of GCs nowadays are giving me two or three different types of submittals, materials, but three different manufacturers, just in case one's not available. I just want to interject that. Yeah, well, that's a, yeah, big, well, that's well, a big issue. A, a good We've example. seen that before on yes. some of our projects. Yes. A, a good example, we're doing some hangars for uh, Embry-Riddle University, and everybody started out saying, well, this is going to be a pre-engineered metal building. Well. They're ten months out before you can even get one, and, and they only and you can only get the ones that are in stock. So we're actually doing a, 
a tilt top with, with double T's on top. Or pre, precast or tilt up. That's the now, now that, that, that that's what we're pricing now. Pricing continue to change. So we, who knows when we, we we're only like in thirty percent, right, Frank? So once we go to hundred percent, it may change. So it's it's very volatile. And, uh, and, and just one last thing. Through the phases as we've talked about, we're a principal push principal run firm in the sense we're all principals in that sense, but we stay involved with the process. That's why you have two the number of principals here as well. You always have us as a contact point and we try to do that. We try to be as seamless as possible, which we are we are seamless in the sense that he'll be talking about things, doing designs, but I'll be seeing what he's doing. I might not be in every meeting at that moment and then vice versa, but we're always staying in contact so we always know what was what's going on and stuff. And that goes all the way till the till we hand the keys over to you. So that we try to maintain that uh, communication with you all Com the way through. Communication is very important. And usually in our office, everybody gets CC on everything. Uh, so project understanding, well, we, we know that the building you're operating at is, is really not what it should be. <laughs> and that's why we're all here. And I like to commend you. I mean, the, the three firms that you selected there, I mean, I'm sure a, anyone of, of us could be a good job for you. So I mean, we, we, we check them out, they, they have good experience, and uh, ho hopefully you pick us. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's a little bit of, of, under 6,000 square feet. Uh, we've done this before. Uh, we've done them at a standalone, which is probably what this is going to be. Uh, our, our structural engineer is the same. The we're proposing is the same that work with us on all, all those other projects. So we have that experience. The, the other question you have was about the, the schedule. Uh, we, we propose a schedule here that it's, it's, it's kind of normal. Uh, our, our practice actually does a lot of municipal work, but we also do a lot of private sector work, and, and usually they're, you know, pedal to the metal. So if we get the job, we can sit down with you, we can review the schedule, and if, if you need to speed it up or you need to slow it down, we can meet whatever time frames are, are critical to you. Um, and, and, and most importantly, I mean, and that's one of the reasons uh, that Roger came, we would debate whether to bring him, but I think he's good as it. Because he has a lot of work to do. <laughs> Take him out of the office. He'll probably be late in the office making up for it. Uh, cost control. Uh, so we do we do our own in-house uh, budgeting, but then we also track the projects through construction, and we keep all of that information, and we use it to validate estimates that we do for projects moving forward, and that's part of uh, Roger's responsibility. The, the, the one thing of note here, if you look at, at St. John's County Fire Station number 18, at $260 a square foot, this, the size of that facility is not much different than the fire station we're doing in Jacksonville, which is number six, 65, mm -hmm. and the price is $497 a square foot. Now, there is there is eight years of difference, but that's that's what eight years, and a lot of that has been in, in the last three years. Uh, and, and that $497 uh, uh, facility, we actually streamlined it where, to the point that we were actually VEing it through the design before we even got a contractor on board. And, and we still couldn't get it, you know, close. We, we were hoping to get about 450 and we couldn't. And then, why because, I mean, I'm not gonna go over every one of these, you, you've seen this, this list in, in the original proposal and the second one. Uh, you know, Frank already alluded to the fact that we'll be involved throughout. Um, we wanna be your partners in this project as, as you move forward. And rather than, Continue repeating like that. I'll open it up for questions. Okay. Um, you, you alluded to the other companies that have provided uh, proposals for us. Um, take just a minute and tell us in your own words how you'd like to. What do you think are the different differentiators? If you could call out something to say, Shannon. PQH is different this way. This this is why you should choose us. Tell tell me your thoughts on that. With um, Roger is one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because no many companies have a, an in-house contractor that actually is reviewing the drawings as they're being prepared to make sure that it's it's it's, it's affordable. It's 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 waterproofable and it's 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 the best way to get there. 
and, and he's monitoring the costs as we go through. Yeah, and, and by the way, VE is not always sometimes the best way to do things. I mm -hmm. mean, you know, sometimes you don't want to VE stuff in the walls and stuff like that. And not always do we agree, do we, Frank? No, no, we don't always <laughs> There's sometimes I'm going to say no. Which is good because we learn from each other all the time. You know, conflict is sometimes good to review. We, we, we believe that the VE starts before the contractor gets involved. So, yeah. you know, we use our experience from having done so many fire stations and the, to, to try to incorporate a lot of that VE early on. And I even on the colleges that we've done, I mean, we have to do a lot of research as to what is the best system? Do, do, do we build that out of steel? Do we build that out of precast? I mean, so we'll do those analysis. I mean, is a, is a metal building the best choice for you? Probably not. It's, it's a tilt-up building. We, with a cast in place roof or double T roof that will withstand the winds, that's probably the right decision. But we're not going to assume that it is. We're going to research it and we're going to prove it. Um, and I don't know how many of these firms are going to come and sell you with two principals and, and then they're just going to pass the project down to you know, somebody else. I mean, here you got what you get. <laughs> yeah. uh, we're going to stay with you all the time, all, all the way through. Uh, I mean, what, we like to think that the reason we've been doing you know, 20 plus years of, of business with Senos County is because every one of their jobs, whether it's a roofing and mechanical evaluation or a new main building, they know they they know what they're getting. They're gonna get us. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's two. Uh, and yeah, by the way, the P in the PQH, Fred, he's still involved a lot too. I mean, we still work closely with him. He's in there three days a week. I mean, even though it's kind of. Yeah. I'm trying to get into one of those. I'm trying to figure out which one makes the most money so I can get the Q of the Don't talk to Q. The Q's not going anywhere. Our car is still trying to get in there somewhere, so that's a different issue. But I will say this. I've been to GC many, many years, big firms. I work for a big company, and I've worked with a lot of architects in my life. And I know this may sound like a cliche, but these guys do, they do collaborate a lot together in their office. We have a big conference room in the back, and we do a lot of meetings together. It's That's one reason I enjoy working with them. Well, we can definitely see the value that our uh, county administrator, who's also the director of public works, is a contractor. Oh, so yeah, you know, we, we live in that realm, and that that resonates. You asked, you know, the only other, and I looked initially. At, we, we pulled up other websites. We looked at both of the other two firms. Could see that their experience level that they had across the board for the number of fire stations and EOCs that they've done similar to ours, which. Which actually is a good compliment. You, you probably picked the three best candidates out of all the ones there. I don't know how many other firms, unless you went with the biggest firms, would have been able to put that kind of a package together for you. Uh, it may not have been a good fit for you in that regard. But we we do work in this region of the you know and we've done work in Lake City, we've done work in Live Oak, we've done work. Uh, I'm trying to think of the bank that we did up north of here. I can't think of the name of it. Uh, first, uh, for those first federal, but we did a number of them throughout that all the way up to throughout back and forth. So we understand this area, we understand it's a different ilk. We, we, we may be in a larger city, but it is Jacksonville. Jacksonville is the largest big city, the, the largest small city in America if you've been there, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, in the sense of how it is. So we we can communicate with you guys just as well as anything. So that's a strength that we feel is there. We're still within, you know, we're, we're within arm's reach. Uh, definitely, this is in our belly. We're doing work all over the state, for, as far as south as the Keys and in the Pensacola area as well. And we're always in communication. T communication has changed a little bit now with online communication and stuff like that happens quite a bit. So there's more communication. And but if, when we need to be here, we'll be here. We're not that far away, and we can do that. So I feel that that's still a strength for us in this area with our experience and. Like we said, Ricardo and myself have been experienced with almost every single one of those jobs that's listed on there. Uh, so you're you're not finding off, you know, this guy's only been here for th six years. We've been here the whole 20, 20 plus years and, and filled that void. So there's no, we have all the experience from the very beginning. Well, let's go back to something you mentioned earlier about reviews. As we look at each of the proposals, the different companies, you know, have set up reviews at certain intervals as you progress through the project. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little more about how you would envision reviewing, you know, either certain stages th through the workflow, you know, that are important milestones. Tell us how you guys would either accommodate or propose uh, to review these things, you know. What we've seen in some, you know, they send you a document, you've got so many days to look at it, and then you send them back. 
you know, I want to give you guys some chance to elaborate on how you how you view that and how would you propose to do that? We, we anticipate that we'll come and, and have a either one or two meetings with, with all the stakeholders to gather the program and the needs of every one of the space. We, we like to document that, so we will prepare a program document that then gets sent out to, to you and you distribute it to all the departments and whoever all the different stakeholders are for them to check in that's the right number of, of stations, that's the right number of square feet. The, you know, we have we have storage for cuts, we have a generator, you know, to check all of that things, all of those things programmatically. Then uh, after we verify that, if, if there's not many questions, you just send that information back to us. If there are questions, we'll come out and, and we'll meet with you and we'll, we'll go through them. Uh, then we will go and play with some conceptual ideas on our own and come up with two or three. And then I, we like to do what we call a squatters, where we sit on the table around with you and say, well, these are the directions we're thinking of going and these are the reasons why, because of flow of, 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 of people or traffic or materials or uh, orientation of the building for winds. I mean, we, we, we'll go through all of those things. Uh, we, we like to call that a, a squatters. And at the end of that session, we probably will have a direction of, which, well, it looks like this is the direction we go and then we will develop a schematic design. Uh, we, we, we prefer to come and sit down with you and explain the, the design you know, in person. Now, with, uh, with COVID and all of that stuff, it's been that we've also done it uh, remotely. We have a big touch screen, 85 inch, I mean, it's like being there, but we, we don't have it. And in either case, we want to sit with you and we want to walk through that schematic design and make sure that you are on board. We'll tweak it as we, as we need to. And then once that gets your approval, then we'll move into design development. And th that becomes a little bit more technical. And, and perhaps not everybody in your group will want to look at all the technical aspects. If you identify who the, the stakeholders are about you know, material selectors, maintenance, uh, servicing, whatever, we will set up uh, interviews with those individuals to go, well, this is the mechanical system we propose, and this is why. This is the electrical system we're proposing to, to use. This is where it's going to be located. What we're doing in the generator, how we're hardening the equipment uh, for you know to be protected for, we we'll, we'll have person-to-person -person meetings at DD with that. Now after that, everything is pretty much already visualized, and so now we're just completing the technical drawings. Uh, at sixty percent, we will send those to you for review. Uh, if if you if you have comments, you can send those to us. If you have questions and it requires a meeting, we'll come and meet with you. Uh, and we also like to do it at 90 percent because you're disclosed, but then you may have missed something, or we, you know something may be missing. Uh, so the same process: we'll send it to you, we'll give you time to review it, and then you either send us comments or markups, or we'll come and meet with you and go over any questions. As we talked about in the early part of the scheduling that we brought up, how we set up those review meetings and review time periods, we'll work with you at that point once you know we're on that level. What do you guys want? What do you need? Because somebody might be on vacation, so it ends up one ends up being a two week period versus a one week period. I mean, we try to keep it within, you know, giving you something and within five to five to seven days, try to calendar or work, allow you time to digest the information, and ask questions, gather them from various sources if you're doing it internally, and then we have and then we have the review meeting at that point. And depending on what your end date schedule, when do you want this building occupied? When do you want those keys handed over to you? Then we work everything back from that with our schedules to make sure we make everything work. If that means there's some overlap, we know the engineers can keep going at 60% toward 90%. It's not going to be affected by the review. We'll have them do that if that's what's necessary to get to that date. And we'll make the reviews will probably be on your part to tell us how compressed they are versus not how compressed. It'll all you know come down to how we're just dealing with that. So that's good. you're going to be a part of that process, and that's how we want to address that. We don't want to get too far out in front of it where things might change, but at the same time, we know that you're wanting something done by a certain time, either because of funding reasons, and whether or not you have to have the money spent by a certain time period, or whatever, we want to make sure we make that work. Plus, you know, the permitting process, how long is that going to be outside of this office? Even though it is for the county and, and, and everything, it does not necessarily mean that it's going to go 
faster than that faster. I'm sure you guys have dealt with that before because everybody's a different entity and they all work that way. No, I figured the fire marshal's office would be a little easier to deal with in this particular case. <laughs> I would hope. That's you know, not necessarily true. You, you know, that's, that's Frank, true. Frank said when we turn over the key, which is which is kind of an interesting point. We do a lot of residence halls for universities. And uh, keying is a big deal for universities. What doors get key electronically, what doors. Frank, for every rhythm, he's had projects where he had to have four minutes just to go over the key. Yes. So, <laughs> and understanding whatever it takes, it takes. And we, yeah. we want to make sure that at the end of the day you're happy. Uh, I mean, we're we're not in this to do a job. We're in this to gain a client, and we know that the best way to gain a client is to do a good job. And and you could call it, keep calling us, and you know, it's think, a good recipe. I think by going through the 30, 60, 90 percent, when you get to there, you guys should not see change orders. I'm outside of it. You follow what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You should have that thing to where you aren't going to get surprised with some big forty thousand dollar change order. We just totally missed it. That that that's a key to a lot of things. Owners don't like that kind of stuff, and change orders really are bad sometimes <laughs> for for teamwork. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that's why we want to get you guys involved up front and get this thing resolved as much as possible, so we get that road running. It, it's just easier on all of us, especially my side. I figure all the firms you're talking are doing this project in Revit, which means that you're yeah. doing it in virtually reality. You know where all the dogs are. So, I mean, that used to be a differentiator, but it's not anymore. Uh, but, you know, we, we have all the capabilities to do that in a 3D form so that we, we can avoid any conflicts and avoid change Okay. Um, those are all the questions that I had. Are there any other questions for the team? Um, any other closing items? Any other thing you want to emphasize or put out to us? When when are you making a selection? We'll do the scoring after everything is, after we go through the meetings today. Okay. And then once the scoring is done, then that has to go back to the board to, they make the... The final selection. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, they say that you always have to do the meeting with an ass, so... We would really like to do this work with you, so <laughs> <laughs> that's our ask. <laughs> all right, all right. Thank you guys so much. Thank you very much. We really Thank appreciate you, you coming over here. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Boring. Withdrawal. Yeah, I kind of figured I kept looking out in the parking lot and didn't see anybody. All right. Airplane. The thing he said about airplanes are kind of like they're kind of like boats. I think airplanes have a tendency to be older planes. Yeah, unless you're just I mean, yeah, ultra rich. Yeah, because their their maintenance procedures on most airplanes are so strict and yes. they take care of them so well. That <coughs> and only know that because my brother-in-law's dad is a pilot. Okay, yes. Um, for the third company, Wanamaker Jensen Architects Incorporated, they sent notification that they are withdrawing.
don't know why they uh, decided to withdraw it. That's probably a long way for them to come up here just for. Looks like a third place. Yep. Well, so far. They asked me for tabulations from the previous one, and I sent them to them. The, the, um, the QRA and the QQH, they were tied for the highest scoring, and then they probably one said maker it. was only three points off from that, but maybe. Um, they said, yeah, this is probably between the two ties. You handed me these cards and I'm looking around at every one of them. You're saying just have a different name. the same name on them. Oh, you picked up three from the same. Oh, well, here, I'll give you mine. Yeah. You they, got four of them. What they were doing is you take one of his and pass them around. No, she would be a group. <laughs> that, that's yeah. the way they got them. They were in a group, yeah. And she was just. I got a Roger and a Ricardo. Okay, hey, here's your other. That was cool. Yeah, that was that was pretty cool. I like that. Oh, I would say. take I, I think take four would, of them down the station on the placemats around the station table. <laughs> I think it would be advantageous to go and do a tour. Oh, yes. Of each of these to see their layouts and the function, build, function, function you say it? Function, that, functionality? Is, functionality. That, is that a word? It yes. is. And I think you should push this so we could all go do this. But I think that would be a very good I special, have a band. Especially in these <laughs> smaller um, communities that are similar in size to us. Yeah. And view each one of them and, and speak with those persons there. And ask the pros and the cons of like the layout and everything about it. That would make sense, but I'm sure Chris knows exactly how to lay it out. No, this is true. I forget this is PS. You did say that out loud. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm uh, sorry. I was already <laughs> thinking. And it just pop right off of there. Yeah. Uh, is that camera rolling? Sure. Yep, it is. <laughs> All right, we've got grand totals, Clemens Rutherford Associates 411, PQH 395. All right, I'll so take grand, it. Grand totals. That will be taken back to Mr. Harris, and I'll see if he wants to put that on the next agenda. All right. If so, right. it will be this um, Tuesday night's meeting. Okay. Nobody's keeping their playing, playing cards or their, or 